Hello students, this is Pathology Chapter 2, Inflammation and Repair, Lecture 1. This chapter covers injury, natural innate defenses against injury, inflammation, regeneration and repair, injuries to teeth, injuries to soft tissues, reactive connective tissue hyperplasia, and inflammatory periapical lesions. The body's responses to injury are inflammation, immunity, and repair. Injury is the result of an alteration in the environment that causes tissue damage or necrosis. Less severe injury can cause hyperplasia, hypertrophy, or atrophy. Inflammation allows the body to eliminate injurious agents, contain injuries, and heal defects. Natural or innate defenses against injury include physical barriers such as intact skin or mucosa, mechanical defense such as the respiratory system cilia and mucus, antibacterial activity such as the enzymes and lysozymes in saliva, removal of foreign substances such as the flushing action of tears, saliva, urine, and diarrhea, and the inflammation process which includes white blood cells. Inflammation is a nonspecific response to injury and occurs in the same manner regardless of the nature of the injury. The extent and duration of the injury determine the extent and duration of the inflammatory response. The inflammatory response may be local and limited to the area of injury, or it may become systemic if the injury is extensive. Inflammation of a specific tissue is denoted by the suffix ITIS combined with the name of the tissue, such as in tonsillitis, pulpitis, and gingivitis. The inflammatory response may be acute or chronic. If the injury is minimal and brief and its source is removed from the tissue, it is considered acute and the duration of the acute inflammatory response is short, lasting only a few days. If the injury to the tissue continues and the inflammatory response is longer lasting, it is referred to as chronic inflammation. Chronic inflammation may last weeks, months, or even indefinitely. The inflammatory response is a dynamic process, continually changing in response to injury and repair. On occasion, an acute inflammatory response may be superimposed over a chronic inflammatory response. On occasion, an overwhelming inflammatory response may lead to further injury. Repair of the tissue occurs only if the persistent source of injury is removed. Inflammation has certain classic or cardinal clinical signs. Some of the localized signs are redness or erythema, heat, swelling, pain, and loss of normal tissue function. Some of the cardinal systemic signs include fever, leukocytosis, elevated C-reactive protein, and lymphadenopathy. Fever is an elevation of body temperature to greater than the normal level of 98.6 Fahrenheit. Leukocytosis is a temporary increase in the number of white blood cells circulating in the blood. C-reactive protein is a nonspecific protein produced in the liver that becomes elevated during episodes of acute inflammation 
or infection. Lymphadenopathy is an abnormal enlargement of lymph nodes. The microscopic sequence of events during inflammation are the following. Injury to tissue, constriction of microcirculation, dilation of microcirculation resulting in hyperemia, erythema, and heat. Increase in permeability. Exudate leaves microcirculation. This is known as transudate. Increased blood viscosity. Decreased blood flow. Margination and pavementing of white blood cells, which is known as chemotaxis. White blood cells enter tissue which is known as emigration, which results in exudate and edema. White blood cells then ingest foreign material. This is called phagocytosis, or cell eating. See figure 2-1 on page 36 of your textbook for a graphic demonstration of the inflammatory response sequence. Hyperemia is an increased blood flow in the capillary beds of injured tissue. This results in erythema or redness and heat. Increased blood plasma and proteins then leak out of injured tissue. This is called exudate. The exudate helps to dilute injurious agents, but results in excess fluid in the tissues, otherwise known as edema. The exudate can be watery, or serous, which is mainly composed of plasma fluids and proteins with a few white blood cells, or it can be purulent ex exudate, or suppuration, which contains plasma fluids and proteins, tissue debris, and many white blood cells. The sequence of events are transudate, then exudate, followed by edema, heat, abscess formation, fistula, and pain. The pictures on the right show examples of abscess and fistula formation. The figure on the left shows a drain being placed to allow purulent exudate to leave the tissue. The microscopic image on the right shows margination and pavementing of neutrophils in a blood vessel. Emigration is the process by which white blood cells escape from blood vessels through gaps in endothelial cells. Chemotaxis is the directed movement of white blood cells toward the site of injury. Phagocytosis is the process by which white blood cells ingest and then digest foreign substances. This could include pathogenic organisms as well as tissue debris. White blood cells or leukocytes include neutrophils also known as polymorphonuclear leukocytes, or PMNs, monocytes circulating in blood, but they are then turned into macrophages when they reach the tissue. Lymphocytes and plasma cells are seen in chronic inflammation and the immune response. Eosinophils and mast cells are seen in both inflammation and the immune response. See figures 2-7, 2-8, and 2-9 for more information. A neutrophil is pictured in figure 2-10. It functions in phagocytosis. 
Its microscopic appearance includes the multi-lobed nucleus and granular cytoplasm that contains lysosomal enzymes for digesting the phagocytized particles. Neutrophils constitute 60 to 70 percent of the white blood cell population. They are derived from stem cells and bone marrow. See figures 2-10 and 2-11 for more information. The monocyte is the second type of white blood cell to emigrate from the blood vessels into the injured tissue where it becomes a macrophage. Like neutrophils, monocytes are derived from stem cells in the bone marrow. The macrophage is mobile and is capable of phagocytosis. It has a single round nucleus and does not have granular cytoplasm. It constitutes 3 to 8 percent of the white blood cell population. This is an image of a macrophage. For more information, see figure 2-12 on page 40 of your textbook. Chemical agents called biochemical or inflammatory mediators cause many of the events involved in the inflammatory response. Biochemical mediators are essential to the inflammatory response and can start or amplify the response. Basic mediators of inflammation can recruit other mediators and immune mechanisms, thus escalating the overall process. Some biochemical mediators are circulating in blood, some come from endothelial cells, some from white blood cells, and some from platelets. Others are produced by certain pathogenic microorganisms as they injure the tissue. Three systems of plasma proteins circulating in the blood may be activated during inflammation, becoming biochemical mediators of inflammation. These are the kinin system, the clotting mechanism, and the complement system. See pages 40 and 41 for more information in your textbook. Other biochemical mediators of inflammation released by the body are prostaglandins and lysosomal enzymes. Prostaglandins cause increased vascular dilation and permeability, tissue pain and redness, and changes in connective tissue. Lysosomal enzymes act as chemotactic factors and may cause damage to connective tissues and to the clot. Endotoxin is produced by the cell walls of gram-negative bacteria. It serves as a chemotactic factor and can activate complement, function as an antigen, and damage bone and tissue. Lysosomal enzymes have a similar chemical composition and action as those released by the white blood cells. This concludes Chapter 2, Lecture 1.